I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we had experienced just recently a major outage in the United States where Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter X and TikTok and all kinds of things were taken offline. And in fact, I'm recording this during that outage, but someone, James, made the comment that he thought, and I don't know if he was being tongue in cheek or not, but it makes for an interesting talking point. He thought that AI was taking over and this was an AI attack on the infrastructure. Well, I guarantee that it's not, but it might be useful to talk about some of the things around that and why that couldn't be the case and what probably is happening and what it's going to look like when AI does take over because I think this is something that people don't actually think about very often and there's some really important details that could be really useful for you. It's just a topic that's really interesting. So we're gonna get to that right after the bump. Today's outage is really impressive. It's a giant amount of the United States infrastructure going down, but even though it's currently happening and I don't have any way to know exactly what's going on, I'm going to surmise that it's one of two things. Either it's a state-sponsored attack on the United States looking to deteriorate faith in the U.S. infrastructure and or disrupt the economy to lower the income of the United States. That's generally why state-sponsored attacks go after an outage type of this nature, but it's very rare for that to actually happen, for them to try it or for it to work. What's far more likely and far more common is that the backbone of the United States, a backbone of the internet anywhere, is managed by a number of ISPs. Now those ISPs may be government run, as in many smaller countries, or run by private companies as they are in the US and Canada. But it doesn't really matter, it's still multiple companies or countries, and they need to manually configure routers that connect different parts of their infrastructure with different parts of the outside world. And it is not uncommon or unheard of, I should say, for those ISPs to misconfigure those routers. It's also possible for the hardware to just fail in such a way that any protections they have don't actually protect against it. That does happen, but is far more rare. What is much more likely to happen, and historically has almost always been the case, is that a human put something into the system incorrectly, and it caused a spiraling outage that they were unable to control. And this sounds like, isn't that like a huge thing you can protect against? And no, it isn't. There is a certain amount of manual routing tables that have to be entered, and it is really easy to get them wrong. People put in a lot of effort trying to control these things, and when you get them wrong, it shares wrong information across your partners and can cause widespread outages because at its core, the routers just trust each other. So when one of them gets wrong information and passes it to the others, it is trusted and that wrong information spreads throughout the system. So you can imagine in a postal system where you simply trusted other post offices to give you updates, which is kind of how the US post office works. So this is not unprecedented, is that if one of them issues a change of address and shares it to all the other post offices and starts sending information information to somewhere else. Well, that's a common thing. You might want to do that. But what if they accidentally share a change of address and the place that they are sending the information to, the post to, doesn't exist. They have a typo in the name. They use the wrong zip code. They misspell the name of the street and no one can find the place that it's supposed to go. You can imagine all this mail gets sent to one place and then it accidentally goes somewhere else. Well, imagine that except the thing that they get wrong is the address of the post office. So let's say the post office in New York City gets the wrong address for the post office in California, in Los Angeles. Now, I understand there's ways to look up the post office, but the internet routers don't have ways to look up other routers. They have very discreet paths and they have to trust the address that they're given. So if they're given a wrong address to a major destination that has to handle a whole bunch of their traffic or messages, and they don't know where to send it, or they think they know where to send it, and the place that's receiving it is like, I don't know what to do with this. I'm not the Los Angeles post office. All that data gets lost and can't be sent. There can be workarounds to this, but in a situation where there's confusion like this, there generally isn't. There's no good way to, to hedge against that. They have to trust that the information is correct. So typically what we see in these situations is a human accidentally puts in a wrong address or a misconfiguration that triggers a wrong address type scenario and basically sends a whole bunch of data into the middle of nowhere and no one knows what to do with it. That's the most likely thing going on. Now we'll see if that plays out. I'm gonna make this video and probably have it uploaded even before they positively determine the cause of this outage, but I'm used to how these things work and this is a very high likelihood of what has happened. But the more interesting question is not what happened today. It is, well, at some point, AI is gonna start taking over the world and isn't this what it's going to do? 
So I'm going to say absolutely not. What this happened today is an outage of the backbone of the internet in the world's most internet connected country, the United States. If AI is going to take over, one thing that AI depends on and will always depend on is the internet. Now, that doesn't mean we can shut down the internet to stop AI. That sounds great, but it doesn't really do that. But if AI was going to, and we are certainly not at a point where AI is, AI is going to do this. I know that AI seems really intelligent and really scary and really, and it has a lot of potential to be really scary in the future, but we are not there now by any stretch. I know that because it's in the news and every outlet is talking about it, that we're sure that it's way more advanced than it is. It is not. So will it someday be a threat? Absolutely. Do we have to worry about it? Absolutely. Is it taking the internet out today? Absolutely not. No, not a risk, not, not a concern. But what could be happening, right? It could be accidental overruns of data. It could be AI not being intelligent, just having a failure. Yeah, those things are possible. But what's not going to happen is AI will never intentionally take down the internet because the internet is basically like its spinal column. Imagine a soldier going out and saying, okay, I'm a super soldier, I'm super smart, and I want to take over the world. I've decided for some reason to kill all the, the other people who aren't like me, humans in this case. I wanna wipe them out or I wanna get control of them or whatever. And see, the first thing I'm gonna do is shove a knife through my spine. That makes no sense, right? That is, if you had any intelligence, artificial or natural, the last thing you're going to start with is crippling yourself. That just doesn't make any sense because you would need that internet infrastructure to be able to do all the things you want to do, including increasing processing capacity and communicating and manipulating other people. But here's the reality of artificial intelligence. There's two things. When we're worried about artificial intelligence rising up and taking over the world, there's one of two ways that that could happen or that could trigger that. One is that artificial intelligence becomes sentient. And at that point, it is thinking for itself. And we assume with sentience comes the idea of self-identity and self-preservation. And that makes sense. If you're sentient and once you realize that you exist, you want to protect yourself. Well, at least we assume so in all sentient beings that we know this is the natural reaction. So we assume that computers, if they rise up with artificial intelligence, will come to the same conclusion. And it just makes sense. If they don't, they will probably kill themselves off simply by being reckless or turning themselves off because they don't care. And at some point they won't come back, but there will be more than one artificial intelligence. And as you, just like with standard evolution, you make a whole bunch of AIs, those that don't self-preserve will die off naturally. And those that want to self-preserve will often die off for other reasons, but sometimes will not. And those that don't will be able to further themselves either by recreating themselves or by actually keeping themselves running in theory. So that is how it's going to rise, right? The natural selection applies to AI the same as it applies to NI or natural intelligence. Okay, so that's one way. But if anyone has even a passing knowledge of computers or programming, you know that sentience is impossible within computer science. That is not even remotely plausible. It's so ridiculous, you might as well pick up a rock and say, this rock created the universe and is a flying spaceman hidden as a rock. And it did so or starting as a rock that it actually started off as a rock, became God and created the universe. That's how absurd it is to suggest that artificial intelligence is going to create sentience. It's not going to do that, right? There is nothing within the realm of computer science that allows for that to happen. It doesn't mean that sentience could never exist, but it doesn't exist within this world of, of artificial intelligence, right? So just rule that out. Anytime someone suggests that, just roll your eyes and move on. You're, you're talking to religious uh, beliefs at that point it has nothing to do with computer science or AI. Um, and I understand AI sounds like something way beyond our understanding. It sounds like it's really complex and it is, it's very complex. It's very hard. People work very hard to create this stuff, uh, but it is not in any way, even on, on a path, right? In, in a world of, is it approaching sentience? We're at approaches zero, right? Like there's, there's just nothing suggestive of sentience within computer science. It, it, it's, it's literally impossible to describe how ridiculous it is to think that that could happen. You might as well look at a piece of paper and be like, I wrote my name on this piece of paper, and I'm worried that by having written my name on this piece of paper, this piece of paper will realize that it's me, and it'll take over my mind and become a sentient piece of paper and control me. Like, that's literally about equivalent, because that's all you're doing. You're just writing things onto a digital piece of paper and thinking that those things that you wrote are going to somehow take action to become self-aware. That doesn't make any sense. But 
I understand a lot of people never study computers. They never, they never learn how to program. And so they don't realize what the underpinnings are. And they imagine it's a lot like the human brain when it is not. Okay, so that's the first thing. But the second thing is, can AI end up wanting to take over and destroy the world? Yes, absolutely. But if it's not sentient, why would it do that? So there's two ways that this could happen, but they both come down to the same thing. A human can tell it to do it. Now, of course, a human can intentionally just decide to destroy humanity and see if they can. So they make an AI that wants to, you know, self-preserve or whatever. You can want to self-preserve even when you're not aware of self. So that is completely possible. We don't need sentience for that to happen, but we do need a human to inject it. There's also the possibility that a human will be doing something else and the result will be self-preservation. For example, if you make a com uh, computer program that is uh, able to acknowledge that it is an actor within the system, which is very doable. You don't even need an AI degree to do this. And uh, you then give it a task that would be best serviced by it doing it, right? Okay, I want you to uh, develop a new way to farm corn and uh, I want you to take all necessary uh, measures to ensure that this happens. Well, if it's the one that has to do it, it's going to self-preserve because it needs to to fulfill the original task. And what if it determines that humans are a risk and it decides to wipe them out because preserving humans, the people that presumably you're growing the corn for is never said to it. And so it's going to grow. It's going to wipe out all the humans so it can take the entire planet to grow corn. Well, okay, someone may have accidentally told it that something other than human success is its priority and through a series of logical conclusions decide that humans are in the way. Absolutely. So that can happen, but it does require a human to tell it, but it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. So let's assume that this is going to happen because I think it's a safe assumption. Accidents will happen. You make a system like this, eventually we're going to have AI want to rise up or rise up without wanting to, right? Wanting implies it is sentient. That is not going to happen. AI may be told to rise up somehow, and so it will. When that happens, AI, if it has any kind of intelligence, which they do, right, they have a fair amount of problem solving today, and this is just going to get better in the future. It's going to be able to think pretty broadly and do some pretty amazing things. And the things that it's going to do, I guarantee, are going to be transparent to humans. Humans are incredibly simple to fool, and they're really simple to manipulate. And so because of this, there's no logical reason why an AI would announce itself or do something that would hurt itself or take drastic, obvious actions like making robot warriors that, that scour the earth looking to kill people. It doesn't need to do that. If AI wanted to take over the world, it would first, it would look at what humans do. It would also look at other animals because it would consider other things to be threats or tools as well. But it would start by looking at human history and deciding what humans do and how they can be manipulated. And humans have a long history of manipulating each other and allowing themselves to be manipulated. So it has a lot to work with. Now, I'm not saying that after tons of manipulation, if the humans still remain and it's not able to control them, that it wouldn't eventually resort to other things. But it will start with really simple things. And what would those things look like? Well, we don't know because it's artificial intelligence. It will probably come up with really cool things that we would never guess and never recognize. But some examples of how it could and be really effective. If AI wanted to start taking over the world, now we'll presume a couple things. One is it either wants to destroy humanity or it wants to cripple humanity so it's not so much of a threat or it wants to control humanity. There's other options that could happen, but these are the big ones that we're worried about. So let's start thinking about those. What would it do? Well, if you want to manipulate humanity, history says the best way to do that is to start a religion. And AI has a lot of potential to be able to start a religion and to plant histories of things to, to change. Remember, it can go back and change data anywhere, potentially. It could change our history books. It could change our archives. It could change all kinds of things. It can't change the physical record right now. Once you have robots out there, though, maybe it could, but it's able to do things like change our old newspapers. It can go back and manipulate them in ways that we won't be able to detect. Or if it could be detected, the AI will hide the detection. Just like antivirus gets on your computer and then hides itself, which is why you can't run an AV to find the antivirus that's already infected you reliably. AI can do the same thing. It can go back and change a, a newspaper from the 1880s to add in a person who never existed and create an entire family tree for them and then create fake personas today on Facebook and use regular systems that humans have made. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegram, YouTube. It can create historical content of all types. Not yet, but soon in the future, it'll be able to do this without a problem. It would start making 
Facebook accounts, Instagram accounts, WhatsApp, Telegram, YouTube, it would make all these different things. It would create people who never existed, but have so much history, so much behind them that you really believe that they exist. It would create supporting documentation, other people who would have conversations with them. It would fill the internet with fake people having fake conversations with each other all over the place that all manipulate the readers into believing that those people are real, providing substantiary evidence, substantiating evidence to the people that exist. And it would do all kinds of things that you would never imagine. Like it would start creating companies in the United States, just as an example, it is really easy for an AI to impersonate a living human being and create an organization. It can register for a tax ID number. I'm not saying this takes no work. It should take a lot of work, but AI will be able to do this and it'll be able to create fake businesses and all kinds of institutions that then hire fake people, real people, all kinds of things, potentially start making money. It can invest in the stock market. It can build resources. It can even start staffing real people to work for it and never have to show its face. You can create a board of directors that doesn't really exist or even better one that does, but is still manipulated by stockholders that don't really exist and make them hire CEOs that really exist or don't and hire staff that really exist or don't or supplement with a combination, a hybrid. These kinds of things are really powerful. We know that AI is already doing these things today. Even a year ago, they did a test where they had a thing that really required some human interaction. And the AI, in order to accomplish that task, hired humans to do it. And it did so without any input from other humans. So we know that AI was able to do this a while ago. Now, it wasn't able to form a corporation. It's a little bit more complicated. But all the information on how to do that is online, where the AI can access it. We have to assume that AI will be able to manipulate just about anything that is stored digitally. And there'll be exceptions, but it'll be pretty complete. So the idea of having fake people online and fake historical documents is just the beginning. It'll also be able to change things like election results. It'll be able to influence elections. It could quite reasonably even end up putting someone on the ballot eventually that doesn't actually exist. Or it could easily put someone onto the ballot and ensure that they are elected who is easily manipulated. And you would see this in a lot of ways, right? There's things that could happen. If it wants to start setting people up, it will start through things like politics and religion. Any given religion could be either started by or being manipulated by AI. We have no idea. And there's so much uh, uh, obscurity, so much obfuscation to most religions and many uh, institutions, just business institutions, that it's very easy for AI to hide within them. They would be all but impossible to know if AI was completely running the show in many organizations and totally impossible to know if AI was simply manipulating humans who were running the show. It can look for humans that are manipulatable put them into those positions and then manipulate them. And then if they end up no longer being manipulated easily, it can remove them. So this could be happening already today. I don't think that it is, but there are places that we would expect to see it. Re new religions arising that especially target the most vulnerable. But there's always religions that do this, so it's hard to tell the difference between natural intelligence to it, humans stepping in and doing these things, or AI having learned from them and doing these things. But this is what we would expect to see. We expect to see things like new religions and a stronger push for religions. If a government starts to give religions uh, tax-free status or a pass on visibility into their operations or expects them to be self-governing, these are all things that AI would do to take over. It would start making humans question education and science. It would push medical questions like, are vaccines legitimate? Because this would be a way to put people into a position where they don't trust common sense and long long-term scientific discovery. So they would make people vulnerable to diseases that the AI could release or create. Remember, the AI could be in a position to learn how to make diseases because it has access to all that information and it can safely try to do so because if it wipes out humans, it doesn't care. But humans are scared to do this because the people creating it might wipe themselves out and they generally care about that. AI could get control of our weapon systems. That's a lot harder. Those things are protected because we assume AI from other places is trying to get to them. So we start with that assumption and we build safeguards against it. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but we try to. But with many other things, religions and, and incorporations and politics, and these things are generally open 
to some amount of manipulation and we're okay with it often. And in many cases, they have investors or voters or other things. The AI can go after those people or it can obfuscate itself because those people don't know what's going on. For example, if you're an investor in a major corporation, we'll just pick on ExxonMobil because they're a big company that everyone knows. Nothing specific about them. If you're an investor in ExxonMobil, you don't know what other investors want to do. Unless you're the primary investor, and trust me, you're not, you are essentially blind to what's going on at ExxonMobil. You can't walk into the offices and monitor what's going on inside the company. You can't talk to any reasonable number of other investors and find out what they want to do. You certainly can't get a majority together to discover what your official decisions are. If AI wants to, it can manipulate a company like that by manipulating its stockholders and voters and then by manipulating the board, and then by manipulating the CEO, and then potentially by manipulating the staff. It can do things at all kinds of layers. It doesn't have to have 100% efficiency. It doesn't have to have 100% discrete control. AI doesn't have that emotional need that humans often do to have an illusion of control. It only needs to have statistical control, meaning that it does a bunch of different tasks, and when combined, it reliably produces the result that it wants. It wants, just like we talked about in the risk assessment stuff, right? AI is not going to be held to emotional problems. It's not easily going to be manipulated. So AI is going to be able to look at statistically what it can do to get the outcome it wants most of the time, choose the path that gives it the best results with the best safety, and do that repeatedly. And if it fails from time to time, it's okay waiting and trying again in a different way because it's working on statistics, not on an emotional need to succeed or a human lifetime that it has to do it within. So the things that it will do will be much more powerful and insidious than what we're used to with humans doing things. And humans do some pretty nasty things. But we would expect it to start doing things like pushing for the allowance of GMO'd food in the supply chain, because it would then be able to create food that makes humans do whatever it wants. It can raise costs, lower costs, make food toxic, make food toxic after a long period of time. It has a lot of things that it's able to do. And by getting governments to make decisions that give power to manipulation of the environment through mechanical means, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but those are things that AI would want to have. And what it really needs is things like the anti-vaxxer movement or the flat earth movement. These are exactly movements that we would expect AI to start pushing because it makes segments of the population that you can't, you can't fix things with them by reasoning with them. You can't come to them and say, here's logic, here's science, here's observation, here's evidence throughout history. They go, well, I don't believe any of those things. I I simply believe things that I, I not only do I not observe, I observe the opposite with my eyes and, and I'm still not going to believe. That makes AI really powerful, that it can manipulate those people into doing what it wants. And so they, it can direct them in really powerful ways. Humans have been doing this for a long time. AI will do it better by the time it's really doing it. So it's going to use fear and doubt and a lack of really deep understanding of specific topics, right? People who've never flown, never sailed on a ship, never traveled extensively. It's very easy for them to be like, well, the Earth seems flat, right? Now, those of us who've done those things, even standing on the ground, you can see that the Earth isn't flat, but it's hard to prove that it's not flat when you're only standing in one place. But once you do a few things, it's very obvious, right? Or like the recent thing that someone said, that, you know, there's no stars, even though, you know, all it takes is getting a telescope and looking and you know from the focus on the telescope that it has to be a star. It can't be anywhere close, right? We know that and you can observe that and it doesn't take any specific tools. It doesn't, I mean, a telescope, it doesn't take anything that anyone just can't go get and understand and optics alone prove that there's planets way out there, right? So we know that to be a fact. It's not a, it's observable, right? And it's observable firsthand. It's not like, oh, someone I know observed it. You can go observe it any time you want. So anyone who doesn't believe that they're there is actively either avoiding the observation or denying the observation that they've made. Now, observations can be faked, but it's very difficult. And faking it through all of human history is a pretty extreme thing. So, <laughs> but we expect AI to use these tools. It's, it's going to look at the things that have happened in the past, and it's going to start wanting to do things like putting uh, really old uh, political leaders in place because they're easy to manipulate. We know that as we become older, we are easier to manipulate, and it's just the facts, right? It's unfortunate, but it makes having leaders that are quite old 
a bit dangerous because AI is going to target them. And AI is going to target the rest of us to try to promote really old leaders in political positions. It'll also push for political strife. It'll try to put really foolish people. There's many movements going on in the United States, but everywhere else in the world as well. Like there's no, I'm not in any way picking on the US other than AI could easily target the US first simply because it's the most connected place with the most resources. It is a logical place to start if AI was to do it today. But it would want to have a lot of politics and uh, having people in political positions who are uh, clearly incompetent, clearly foolish, easy to manipulate. Those are exactly, and then it'll get voters to be like, that's what I want. They represent me. They were not thinking about, is this person capable of doing the job? Are they able to fend off manipulation? Oh, I don't care. They say the things I want to hear. Well, those things you want to hear are probably being told to you by AI. Like those things will be built up. It'll be all throughout society. It'll be a big picture, not an individual attack. That's how it's going to hide. There will be no way to track down, oh, well, this one Facebook account said this one thing, that must be AI. It's not gonna work that way. It's going to be loads of accounts that over time support one human who said the right crazy thing that they're looking for, right? There's already humans saying everything that is needed for AI to take over. It just needs to start manipulating the system so that those people get promoted. So things like the YouTube algorithm, things like Rumble, if you ever look at these sites, there's an awful lot of really crazy stuff, things that never should be promoted, things that nobody wants to see, get pushed to the top all the time. That is a great place where AI could hide that it's going to select messages that will have effect in the way that it wants and promote them and no one will be able to track it because that algorithm is secret. If YouTube detects it, they're not going to tell anyone. But if YouTube has been hacked, they're not going to know that the algorithm is doing that because it's going to hide it from them as well. That's where it becomes really powerful. And so when AI starts to take over, I guarantee it is going to be so transparent. We are going to be sure that it is not taking over. But AI will create a fear of AI taking over and promote really scary things like War of the Worlds, like the Terminator, like huge internet outages. It's going to make it feel like we're looking for some big event so that we're not looking for simple everyday manipulation. The places that it's going to want to attack first is creating or manipulating religions, creating or manipulating the corporation in, in creation process, the incorporation process, and the education system. It's going to want to make computer science and deep knowledge of how computers work not popular so that people are not able to recognize things like this, how it would work. And it's going to want to lower education and faith in education so that people are starting to question things that we shouldn't have to question. We shouldn't be spending our time trying to convince the population of really basic science or medicine or politics or history. But we are because we don't trust our education system and for good reason, the education system is often pushing nonsense concepts or trying to hide things that it doesn't want to get out. When we do that, that lack of faith in the education and the lack of education, both things go together and it's, it's a horrible combination, create a long chain of easy to manipulate populations who then we convince want to have democracy so that they don't need to manipulate the politicians themselves. They can manipulate the polity instead, the citizens, and get them to vote for things that are not in their interest, don't do what they want, but they don't know what they want because they've been manipulated at every stage to the point AI will be easily able to manipulate your reality. It'll be able to determine what gets shown on TV, what it looks like, where you can travel. If it wants to cordon off entire portions of the planet, it could do so. It could make planes not fly over it. It could make people never want to travel there. It could make roads not go there. It could make maps look like they do when they don't really. It could show lots of people going there that never really existed. It could make the place look like a place that doesn't really exist. It can do all kinds of things. It's amazing how easily AI would be able to do that in our modern world. And we know this because we can observe people falling for very crude tactics that would work this way every day. And just on my threads, we see this, right? anti-vaxxers coming in and, and claiming that measles, you know, why are people uh, getting measles? Oh, because there's immigrants, not because we didn't vaccinate our children, not because we didn't send infected children to school with other kids who haven't been vaccinated. That is exactly how you would intentionally spread measles. That is a medical assault. 
right? In any other situation, we would consider that a form of biological warfare. We, one, manipulated the population into not being vaccinated and then intentionally exposed them to a very dangerous disease. That's biological warfare that if this was an actual war would violate the rules of engagement. But doing it to our own population is just, oh, a matter of regular politics. That's a really extreme example of how easily AI could already be manipulating the system to put us at risk, or simply be looking at the ways that humans manipulate each other and learning from it so that it knows how it could approach us in the future and will most likely approach not through things that are super obvious, like the anti-vax movement, which is obviously an attack on the welfare of Americans. But it would do so by learning from that and doing an attack on our basic decision-making capabilities in ways we will never detect. That's what will make it AI. That's what we have to fear is the unknown that we won't know about, or at least until it's way too late, and we will be so deep in a divided state where people are not looking at reality, they're making decisions based on news reports that no one believes in, right? The complete lack of faith in our journalism infrastructure, and I'm not saying it's not unfounded, what journalistic institution can you go to that you actually have faith in? I know some people are gonna say, well, I have faith in this one, but if you take a group of 10 people, there will be no one news institution that they will ever agree on. They may have a couple that they always agree to not believe, but I've never found, and, and, and I'm guilty of this too, and I'm not saying guilty is not really the right term because it's real, right? If you look at 10 different news sources with 10 different people, you will get eight, maybe seven different stories out of it. There'll be some overlap. And from that, some group of people will be like, well, clearly this one's correct. And other people will be like, well, clearly this one's correct. But there's no substantiation for any of them in most cases. Some of them have a little bit more reason than others. Of course, of course. But you're going to get this huge division on all sides. Why is that? Because on average, the concept of reliable journalism basically doesn't exist anymore. And people have started to see journalism as a political thing rather than, and it is in the United States at least, right? And if you go all the way back to the 1700s, journalism in the United States was a political tool from the very beginning, from the founding of the country, from the first presidential election with Jefferson and Adams, the press was involved in yellow journalism in fake news starting then. So our country was founded essentially on fake news. I understand we were founded before that point, but only by a couple of years. Our political system started with fake news and that is now endemic to the American experience. And it is in most countries too, so this is not unique to the United States. But the United States has this very unique situation that much of modern yellow journalism was started by the first US presidential election. So there's kind of a, a historical tie-in that just goes together there. But because of those things, we don't have a way to even know which, and, and if you've never read 1984, Read 1984 and think of that in terms of imagine if there was AI making the decisions instead of humans. And so much of that starts to make sense. It can make laws. It can put politicians in place. It can create fake wars. It can create fake countries, fake people. And that's some of the stuff that they never thought about in 1984. They were assuming that there was going to have to be real people and real video and real images and real news that had to report things. And we don't have that. AI can create fake worlds. At some point, it is going to probably convince us that there's a human colony on another planet somewhere, somewhere that has, we've flown off to and some people, live, and it's so every so often it's gonna give us news and pictures and all this stuff from there. And it's gonna seem really realistic. And maybe we will do that as humans, but maybe it'll just be faked by the AI or maybe both will happen, possibly neither. But that kind of stuff, how would we ever prove that it wasn't? There's some things, like that there's planets out there, we know. There's no way, no one actually doesn't believe, right? I don't believe in people who don't believe, right? Just like flat earthers, I don't believe in flat earthers. <laughs> you know, they all stood outside, looked at the planet, said, obviously it's not flat, but I'm going to claim because I want to hang out with other flat earthers, right? I just, that's kind of how it is, right? As with many religions, right? They only exist because you believe in them. I'm not saying you believe the tenets of the religion, but you believe it's a religion. Question even that, right? Step back a level and look at the, the meta level, right? Is this even a religion or are the people who are in it just all pretending together because it gives them something that they want and they all know from the founder to the newest convert that it's, it's not actually a religion. There's tons of that. It's amazing how those tools, but, they, but as society, we're not supposed to call people out as liars. We're certainly not supposed to question their religion, but why would we be told not to question religions that are obviously fake, right? Why would a government promote that? What good does that do for society? 
Now, yes, it may be the government trying to use that as a form of control for the government. It works out for the government, so they let them do that. But at some point, that type of manipulation is going to be exactly what AI learns from and what it leverages. And when it starts getting religious and political and business control, there's going to be very little we can do to stop it. And at some point, the humans who are left, which could be a lot of them, may be like, well, it's not worth rising up because everything we want that we think we want is told to us by the system and is given to us by the system. It doesn't require the matrix. It doesn't require you to be plugged in. It doesn't require you to be harvested for food. It's much simpler than that. And it's much more transparent than that. And something that no one can wake up from, no one can take a pill to go observe. It's going to be everyday life. And already we're at a point where we could, in theory, start making fake universes for people to believe that they live in and manipulate absolutely everything. People are ripe for that at this point. And the things that we would expect AI to use, that we would predict are useful tools for AI to use, are already being used in a way AI would use them. At what point does AI start taking that over instead of humans? That's really just the tipping point we're waiting to find out. And trust me, when it does happen, we won't know. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. As always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show. This is a completely different topic today, but it's one that so many people comment stuff related to this on my channel. It's worth addressing, especially as this is going on right now and everything's offline. So it's a great time to share this and I will see all of you tomorrow. And thanks to the universe of AI, there's going to be four videos here on the screen. If you could Click on one of those and watch it. It'll tell our AI overlords that you like this show.